Okay, I'd like to call to order the uh, February 4th Washoe County Open Space and Regional Parks Commission meeting. Um, can we do a roll call? Stephanie Chen, absent. Polly Boardman, present. Heidi Anderson, present. Doug Doolittle, present. Thomas Gwynn, present. Darla Lee, absent. Chris Nenzel, present. Jennifer Oliver, present. And Greg Shorts, present. Great, thank you. Chris, do you want to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, moving to item three, is there any public comment at this time? Okay, so for the approval of the agenda for today's meeting, I'd like to point out that the Eagle Scout presentation number seven will occur later in the agenda when the Eagle Scout has arrived, probably be more around three o'clock. Um, with that, are there any other questions or discussion about the agenda today? I move to approve. Second. Okay, so let it be shown that um, Commissioner Doolittle um, made the motion and um, uh, let's see, Commissioner Nenzel made the second. Um, for the approval minutes for the January 7th meeting, is there any items to discuss? Oh yeah, sorry. Need, <laughs> All those in vote. favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> um, item five, uh, the approval of minutes for January 7th. Any discussion? Motion? of the January 7th, 2020 minutes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, moving on to the acknowledgement of parks operation staff for outstanding service. All right, there's no items for number six today. Um, as mentioned earlier, we're gonna skip the Eagle uh, Scout presentation for right now until he arrives. Um, so now moving on to number eight, presentation, discussion, and possible recommendation to the Board of County Commissioners to approve an agreement between Washoe County and Reno Tennis Club for Washoe Tennis Center, and this is for possible action. Okay, good afternoon, commissioners, um, staff. For the record, Colleen Wallace Barnum, Park Operations Superintendent. Um, and I'm here today to provide a presentation, um, discussion, and the possible recommendation um, to the Board of County Commissioners to approve an agreement between Washoe County and Reno Tennis Club um, for Washoe Tennis Center. Uh, so Washoe Tennis Center, let's um, kind of where it is, we'll orient ourselves. Um, it is off of Moana Lane, and um, it's kind of sits almost within Washoe Golf Course um, on the far um, kind of, I guess, southwest end. And uh, there's this total of six courts that you can see there in the overhead. Um, there's also some various amenities um, throughout the, um, the center uh, for tennis players. So Reno Tennis Club, um, we have been working with the Reno Tennis Club um, through an agreement since 2007. Uh, the agreement essentially allows for the Reno Tennis Club to have some exclusive use of the courts on a regular basis in exchange for the operation and maintenance of those courts. Uh, the Reno Tennis Club members are at the courts, I can tell you, on a daily basis. Um, the agreement requires, um, these are just some highlights of the, of the agreement in general, requires that $3,000 um, is spent by the club annually and that that money is put back into the maintenance of the area. Uh, they often will put in at least four to five times that much in an annual uh, year. Uh, so resurfacing of two courts can cost um, anywhere from twelve dollars to $15,000 and they typically will resurface two courts each year on a three-year cycle. Uh, so Washoe County, um, in turn, also can utilize its Park Infrastructure Preservation Fund to assist with ongoing maintenance needs. Uh, the next several slides are examples of some of the improvement projects that have been completed over the past um, five or so years. Um, so this is an example of sort of some tennis court repair and resurfacing. 
Uh, sounds like back in about 2010, they had to, um, they spent a lot of money on re-asphalting the, all of the courts, and it was quite a bit of money, so they came up with the program of doing um, two courts every three years, and it's really uh, benefited them a lot. It's a lot less costly um, in general uh, to do it that way. So this particular project cost um, the tennis club in that one year $12,060. In 2017, this is courts five and six, um, the repair and resurfacing. And that one cost a little bit more, 13890 And sometimes it just depends on how much repair work needs to be done. That's why you'll see that the costs vary from year to year. In addition, from year to year, sometimes those costs increase. Uh, Washoe County uh, used some of our infrastructure preservation money in 2017 to um, resurface the asphalt pathway throughout this, uh, the tennis center and um, it cost us $20,825 for that. Uh, 2018, courts three and four were then repaired and resurfaced for a total cost of 15,000. Uh, this was a project that um, the club wanted to do. It sounds like um, they had quite a bit of wind uh, coming from the south. Uh, in this direction of these courts, um, southwest, I should say. And so they uh, planted um, these plants there, for, uh, cost about $1,400. This is when they were first planted, kind of a picture. And then it obviously provides a windbreak for that area. And from time to time, if one dies off, they just replace it with one of similar size. Uh, next big project that they did out there over the last five or so years, um, this is a before picture of an area they designated for a hitting wall with a concrete pad, fencing, and surfacing. The total costs were um, $30,852. Uh, so you can see here beforehand where the cones are is where they're going to be digging um, quite a large trench for the, the wall. And this is just the progress of a wall. If you've ever wondered how a ball wall was created, I was kind of curious with these pictures. And there it is when it's concreted over. And then this is the back end of it, and there's a fence that'll obviously catch the balls. Um, and then that's the new concrete that was poured. And then there's base material around it. And then this is what it looks like now. So that before picture, and then now this is the after picture. Um, and it's a nice amenity for the, for the players. Um, and then this is before a picture of an old deck and seating and waiting area. So a lot of times they'll wait and, um, you know, wait for their match to start. And um, there was a donation for this project. This took place last year, I believe. It was in 2019. And the total costs were $25,713. So um, that's what it looked like before. And... Uh, one of the things that they were concerned about is that it was never shady enough, sometimes during the day. Um, so they wanted to create a um, kind of a pergola area. Uh, so this is once they demoed the, um, the DAC and sitting area. And then these are the posts for the pergola. There's the pergola. And putting some concrete underneath. And that's what it looks like today. So a much nicer kind of shaded seating area for, um, for the tennis players. Um, just wanted to really say thank you to the Reno Tennis Club. Unfortunately, none of their members could make it today, um, but they really do a great job keeping that Washoe Tennis Center in excellent condition. Um, we appreciate the ongoing public-private partnership, and we fully support that new agreement. Um, and then, you know, really what we've been talking about over the last year is um, their, uh, their president and treasurer have come to me with some concerns. Um, they've been losing some membership steadily since about 2010, um, and they've been doing some research on what other tennis groups are doing in the area, and it seems like they might want to find another way to operate in the future. Um, they've been talking with us about just some different ideas, whether or not they could charge fees, and, you know, we have kind of a larger discussion on all of those items. So um, we really wanted to get the agreement in place, and then we can go through negotiations on, on how they might want to operate in the future. Um, but... If you guys have any questions, um, please let me know. Um, but a possible motion, um, if you if you concur, is uh, to move to recommend to the Board of County Commissioners approval of the agreement between Washoe County and the Reno Tennis Club for the Washoe Tennis Center. Thank you, Colleen, for the presentation. Uh, I do have a couple of questions because I, I didn't see it. Um, and I know you're going to be working on the agreement further, but how many hours of exclusive use is in this new agreement? I exclusive use for the club. 
So they, it's a number of courts. They always have to have at least one court available for public use on any, on any given day. Right. And the exclusive use, it provides them a number of courts um, every, you know, for every, you know, certain periods of like when they do their league play. Um, so it's, it's in the attachment of the agreement and um, it's, it's, you know, it's usually set out a, a period of time, a number of hours, maybe from uh, 10 to 2. Uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They would have league play, you know, on the courts. Um, so uh, there's there's some exclusivity um, that provides them the opportunity to be there. But again, with one court always available for the public that isn't part of the club. Okay. How about how about for tournaments, special events, tournaments? Do they so, have all all the courts? And those are done on a on a case by case basis. So they're supposed to email us whenever they do a tournament if they were ever to you know take up all six courts and let us know in advance, and then we have the ability to approve that um, that special um, tournament. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So um, the next bullet point mentions that they normally or they often put four to five times of that back. Um, they're over the 3000 so they would normally generate between twelve and $15,000 worth of money that they would then donate? I'm not sure what their, what their fees are um, for, their, for the club members, but they, they, they're required, you know, per the agreement, to put 3000 of that back into the courts annually. And okay. again, they put, you know, like you said, four to five times as much back into the courts. Mm -hmm. So um, they generally, back in 2010, they had some reserves, and that's when they did that asphalt resurfacing and then decided to do the every three years for each you know, set of double courts because it was, they figured it was, it was too expensive. It was, um, it was just not, not cost effective, and this is much better. So they're seeing less problems with the courts, mm -hmm. resurfacing them every three years. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm answering your question, but they, they, I'm not sure what they generate annually. I can, I can find out from their club members and let you know. And did, did staff do a study to determine uh, if RTC is allowed the additional hours, what impact that would have to waiting times to non-RTC club members? No. Okay, we so we, we, we don't know what that would do. No, and we and we have so this is one of many um, areas. So this is our only tennis center where it's exclusive to tennis. But many of our parks have tennis courts in them. So we have many parks with tennis courts that, sure. you know. And I'll, and I'll be honest. I, I know where this is from looking at it on the map. I didn't know where it was until you showed the map. I but I do know where it is, you know. But I just never gone down that road or I yeah. haven't for years. So. Um, so maybe a lot of the public doesn't know it's there, and mostly Reno Tennis Club is the right. The, could be, or the could people be. using it. But I would just be curious to, if, if staff could do maybe a, an impact to non Reno Tennis Club members to see what giving Reno Tennis Club ex additional exclusive hours to this facility would do to non Reno Tennis Club members. Sounds like Eric might have an answer to your question. Okay, cool. I thank you for the record, uh, Eric Crump of the Washoe County Community Service Department. As Colleen had mentioned, uh, we've had this agreement in place with Reno Tennis Club for the Washoe Tennis Center for, for many, many years. Uh, his, um, in the past, we actually renegotiated the exclusivity of this, I believe, two terms ago, um, based on some input that we had from the public uh, and the impacts to them trying to access public. So we, we're certainly well, well aware of that. Uh, we reduced. Uh, their ability to, I think originally they had some exclusivity for all the courts. Uh, we mandated that there are some courts available uh, and the public as well. And keep in mind, we reduced, this is for their league play. So we'd reduced the number of days they could offer or have league play there. So we worked with them and then they have a sign up board um, for anybody who comes. It's not just there's members. So member of the public, there might be a lot of tennis center players there as well. Uh, but the public has access to that sign-up board, and that's how folks are in line and get to those courts. So we kind of put some protections in place, recognizing uh, that these are public courts, but at the same time, the public is benefiting greatly from this arrangement uh, with Washoe County Arena Tennis Center. All right, go ahead. Uh, my question is, it, Obviously, as you were drafting this, and you've already solicited some public feedback, but you're not hearing from the public that there's complaints about not having access to those courts, I would assume. So the, this, I think the challenge um, for, for that particular area um, is there, there might be a perception that you have to be a member of Reno Tennis Club to be able to participate and play tennis at that location, but you don't. Um, and so there are people who are, you know, 
I think they, you know, because sometimes five courts could be taken up by Reno Tennis Club, mm -hmm. have a perception that they, they get that. But again, back to what Eric was saying, um, we also, they, they're putting a, a right. lot of resources sure. into those, into that whole complex, really, into the whole center. Um, and those those attributes wouldn't be there if it wasn't, right. honestly, for a lot of their input. So um, we appreciate it. And I think you you are going to get a handful of people. There, there definitely are some people here from time to time that sure. do express yeah. their concern about that. And these are just like around the corner from the other tennis center that's on Plumas. Plumas, or, correct. Yeah. Kind of so, just, yeah, just yeah. behind. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, you bet. No, uh, the only, uh, Doug Doolittle, the only comment that, that I'd make, and I think it's much of the complaining is from within the, the club itself as to how people get on the courts and how long they can stay on courts and whether they can check the board and do different things that tennis players like to do to, to get more and more time on the courts. But I don't think uh, from the outside there has been much. And I did want to make a note on the agreement that you have seen. There's just one change, and that's in the term. It's on page four. And um, it, the, the change is just that it would be commencing on January 28th. So it would be a retroactive agreement. And it's going to go before the Board of County Commissioners on February 25th. I'd like to ready for motion. Um, first, is there any public comment? On this, okay. Can I ask no one more public question? comment? It, is this just simply a renewal or an extension of an agreement that's already in place, more or less? It's it's not a renewal, so it's it's every you know it's a it's an agreement that's for three years, mm -hmm. and then you can have two one year renewals, and then it's you know we're we're looking at the set of next five years, so a three year agreement with two two one year renewals. Um, so yes, it, it we're up on the five year. You know we've already done the two one year renewals. And so 2020, we're up for um, a new agreement. Okay, but it's just, it's the Reno the Test Club has had an agreement with the county previously that was similar to this. Correct. It's, okay, it's essentially I, the same agreement that they've had the last, you. you know, I think this might be the second or third. Okay. Thank you, Colleen. You're welcome. Is there any further discussion from the board? Um, is there a motion? I'll, I'll move to uh, recommend to the Board of County Commissioners approval of an agreement between Washoe County and Reno Tennis Club for Washoe Tennis Center. I will second the motion. Okay. Um, any further discussion from the board? Okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. Thanks, Colleen. Okay, I don't think we have one yet. So let's move on to number nine, the program park of the month, Park Ranger Association of California Conference 2020, Andy Brown and Bob Holland. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Park Ranger Andy Brown. And I'm Park Ranger Bob Holland. And uh, we're excited to be here today to talk to you about something we've got coming up uh, in a little less than a month from now. And uh, it involves um, some, some training that's going to be available to some of our park staff. So the Park Rangers Association California uh, Conference Training. What is PRAC? Um, the Park Rangers Association of California is a professional organization created for park rangers and other, other uniform park employees of municipal, county, special park district, state and federal park agencies in California and Nevada. Um, they've been around since 1976 and they've sought to provide and prom promote uh, an open forum for sharing of experiences, ideas, problems and information and training. Um, PRAC seeks to establish uh, statewide professional standards for rangers through certification, legislation, and interagency cooperation. Uh, Nevada has been uh, a part of PRAC, even though it's a tech, you know, it's called Park Ranger Association in California. We've been members of that organization for many years. And as uh, members, Washoe County Uniform Park employees have access to a unique forum called PRACnet, 
which is used to exchange information, ideas, and problems with employees and other park agencies from across the state of Nevada and California. Uh, we also have a quarterly newsletter that's published by fellow park professionals and PREC members, including yours truly. Um, <clears throat> Washoe County Park Rangers have held positions on the board of directors for many years, and uh, I've myself have been uh, director of Region 5, which is the whole state of Nevada, since 2016. Um, one of the things that they provide to us is training and networking opportunities with other agencies uh, aside from Washoe County. Um, county park staff are able to participate in local trainings and networking opportunities with other local government agencies and nonprofits that might not otherwise be available to us. Uh, we've worked with uh, Nevada Division of Forestry. Um, we've got partners at Carson City Parks Recreation and Open Space, Nevada State Parks. Uh, we've had trainings with Nevada, or I'm sorry, uh, Washoe County Animal Services, uh, Backcountry Horsemen, UNR, and Northern Nevada Hopes, just to name a few. Um, this is a photo of uh, a training that uh, we took with NDF uh, a few years back to uh, classify us as Class B fellers. Uh, this was a training that we took with the Backcountry Horsemen uh, to train us on how to deal with a uh, injured horse or one that becomes loose from its owner in a park. And this is just a photo that uh, we, we took last July. We, uh, we posted it on social media just to promote um, kind of unity, if you will, togetherness of park rangers. Uh, uh, that's uh, park ranger Nick Stoyer and I alongside John Costello, who is with the Carson City Parks and Rec and Open Space. Um, you want to jump in? You can go. Okay. Um, so, Prack and Washoe County Parks, um, uh, you know, another, like I was saying, our, our training um, opportunities that they offer us, uh, we, we have an annual conference and training that uh, we participate in. It's typically either in Northern California or Southern California, depending on the year it alternates. And uh, there are usually three primary areas of training resource management, park operations, uh, interpretation, and public safety, just to name a few. You don't typically see a, a county parks vehicle uh, with palm trees in the background, so I thought I'd throw that up there. Um, this image is of a slide that I took uh, during a training to kind of talk about how uh, folks have used informational signage on a trail to promote um, park users to participate in uh, change surveys through photography. Um, this is basically what to do if you encounter a mountain lion on the trail. Um, you know, there's many different types of training that um, it's informational, but it also helps us in a professional aspect. And, uh, you know, especially when we're disseminating information to park users, what do you do when you encounter a mountain lion? Well, that's, that's some good information right there straight from the experts. Um, that's, uh, you know, in addition to some of the updates that we get on, on law uh, and you know, changes that occur in policy, and, uh, not just uh, California, but all over the nation. And we might have the occasional wildlife uh, presentation or two thrown in there too. Let's say banana boa. Um, Prac and Washoe County Parks, for the 2020 conference, it's being held this year in Reno, so that's very special to us. Um, it's uh, occurring this year at the Whitney Peak Hotel downtown, uh, March 2nd through the 5th. Uh, Washoe County is the host agency for the first time. And, uh, and actually, we've taken the lion's share of the, the work to prepare for this event. So many of the trainings and logistics have been coordinated by county park staff, including Mr. Holland here. Uh, many of the training sessions will be presented by Washoe County staff, including parks, um, CSD, and actually, that should, uh, that should be corrected to say Washoe County Manager's Office, the Sheriff's Office, and the Mayor Arboretum. Just to name a few. Yeah, so yeah, we're very excited about hosting this conference this year. Um, it's a four-day conference. We're gonna start off on Monday doing a field trip up to Virginia City. And we're gonna highlight the, the history of that area and kind of really show off um, the general area here. Um, so we're really excited about that. And then Tuesday and Wednesday is when we have presentations. 
Um, it's you know, all day long presentations that are broken down into three different tracks. Um, the three tracks are interpretation, public safety, and resources. Um, some of the, the highlighted, you know, I don't want to go through all the different, you know, presentations, but some of that, the ones I want to highlight um, in resources, um, we're going to um, work or have some of our partners like Rad Trail is going to do a presentation on mountain bike trail building, um, especially advanced mountain bike trails. Um, we also have our a major partner, Eastern Sierra Trail Coalition. They're going to talk about collaborations and connectivity with trails around the greater Reno area, um, as well as we're going to have, um, you know, in, as well as for some resources um, track, we're going to have weed management through soil science, um, chemistry with Matt Setti. So he's going to come out and talk about that. So he's a major partner who's been doing a lot of work in our parks. Um, in addition to um, that, we have uh, the public safety. So Washoe County Sheriff's Office is going to do um, culture, dealing with cult different cultures and how to handle that, um, as well as we're going to have the Eastern um, Sierra Avalanche Center come out and do a presentation on avalanche forecasting and disseminating information to, to the public. Um, another one that's going to be really good is the um, Narcan, naloxone drug identification. So if we do have a drug overdose in the park, um, we'll have the proper training on how to deal with that and how to administer Narcan, um, as well as there'll be um, ones on ranger podcasts and what have you. So in interpretation, we're going to have a really good um, um, presentation um, dealing with history and exhibits from Ernie Ross, Marie Fong, a park ranger, is going to be, or ex-park ranger is going to be involved with that as well. Um, so, and also there's going to be a few, uh, there's also a really good one creating and using short films to document park history and provide an interpretation. That's going to be through uh, Joe Flannery, who works for the Tahoe National Forest. Um, in addition to that presentation that evening, on Tuesday evening, He's going to show three films that have been part of the Wild and Scenic Film Festival. So that will be a good addition to, to the, the conference. Uh, as well as other ones, we'll have you know, multi-specialist park ranger models for the, um, you know, the, you know, the public safety one. So there's a lot of cool um, presentations that are going to be um, happening at this conference. And uh, we're really excited to be part of that. Yeah, these are these are trainings that, like I said, we don't normally have access to. So we uh, we had the opportunity to put that together, not just for our own sake, but for all of the folks that are going to be traveling over here from California. We've got park agencies as far south as San Diego and as far north as the uh, North Bay that will be joining us, and probably a couple from Northern California as well. So uh, you know, a lot of those folks are going to have the opportunity to see how. Um, how our parks are, are um, you know, and how we deal with the issues in parks too. And we're actually going to have the opportunity on one of the days to take them out and uh, show them around one of our parks. So um, on Monday of that week, on March 2nd, um, I'm leading a historic tour of the state. Um, we're going to, uh, in partnership with Nevada State Parks, take a tour of the um, Mormon Station State Historic Park in Genoa. Uh, we're going to tour a couple sites of Virginia City as well. Um, Fourth Ward School, Collar Mine, and the Gold Hill Hotel is actually our lunch stop, but there's a lot of history involved there too since it was the uh, oldest hotel in operation still currently in Nevada. Um, and then Thursday, March 5th, um, in partnership with uh, one, of our, uh, one of our partners that we work with quite a bit on the trails, uh, Kevin Joel. He uh, owns Sierra Trail Works, and he's a member of the Eastern Sierra Trails Coalition. He's going to be putting on a three-hour training for us at Bartley Ranch um, in regard to how to uh, successfully maintain trails and for today's uh, trail user environment. If you would like any more information about the conference or if you have any questions about any of this stuff, uh, my contact information is there as well as Bob's. And uh, feel free to visit our website, calranger.org. Um, we put these trainings on every year, but like I said, this one's very special to us because this is going to be the first time we're hosting. So it's going to be pretty awesome. Do you have any questions? Uh, Doug Doolittle, just a couple of comments. First, uh, 
Bob and Andy, congratulations on your involvement in the organization and, and your leadership in that organization. That's great. And uh, uh, furthermore, congratulations on getting the conference here in Reno. That's always tough to get outside states to, to come to a state that's um, not even in the name of the organization. So it's, it's great to have uh, <laughs> right. Nevada represented here, So and especially led by Washoe County Park Rangers. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about that. In addition to all of the, the work and the networking and, and collaboration that we get to do now with uh, Nevada State Parks and in Carson City and and uh, just you know things that normally don't occur you know we normally stay within our little areas and and uh, it's all in the name of uh, uh, professionalism and spreading that knowledge with uh, between each other we we actually uh, be, um, since we become involved with this process we actually communicate a lot more with those folks uh, you know on uh, issues with campgrounds and public use and things like that it's great yeah, I'll just echo Commissioner Doolittle's uh, comments. It's great to see this here in Reno. I hope that uh, as the conferences go forward in time that they'll choose a location somewhere in Nevada every few years. It'll give them a great opportunity to see some diverse parks, um, regardless of which location they choose in Nevada as compared to California. So that'd be my comment. I think once they get to see this uh, area, I, th I think that they're going to have a hard time finding excuses not to come back. <laughs> Thank you. Add an N and become Frank. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to brainstorming on how to incorporate that somehow, but uh, I, you know, I'll take the tertiary region. It's 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 fine. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Andy and Bob. Appreciate it. I think we still don't have an Eagle Scout. Um, park report. For the record, Colleen Mullis Barnum, um, some park reports uh, just to report on the Christmas tree recycling. Our numbers were uh, similar to the previous years, about 3,000 at Rancho and 3,000 at Bartley. Um, some programs um, coming from the cold. I think we're on program number five. Um, so if you haven't been out to any of those, they're on Saturday nights at 7 p.m. at Bartley Ranch Park. Um, usually last about an hour with an average attendance around 100 people. Um, and then uh, we have the Gardening in Nevada series. That's a cooperative series we put on with um, UNR's Cooperative Extension. And it starts tonight from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. also at Bartley Ranch Park. Um, and we also did some um, interviews. We're uh, filling those uh, park ranger and recreation coordinator positions and hopefully we'll have some people to introduce to you soon. all I had. Um, if you had any, I, I don't think we have any planners here. I'm not sure if you had, if you had any questions on the planning report, but we could um, mention anything. Um, oh, sorry. I gave you all uh, passes for Animation Academy, and that's going to be starting February, I think, 15th. Um, so please come out. It'll be a fun, fun exhibit at the museum, at the Wilbur D. May Museum. Okay. I think that's all I had. Okay, go ahead. Um, tell me if I'm out of line here. I'm sure you will. But uh, <laughs> at, at what point in time are you going to bring back to the commission uh, information on the budget for this next year? I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, Dave has an answer, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps under the director's reports that we're receiving right now. Well, this isn't necessarily a director's report. Uh, for, the, for the record, Dave Solero, uh, Assistant County Manager. Um, based on the, um, the question, how about in March? We bring a, a, a budget update to you. Uh, that's, that's essentially where we're going to be uh, through the process. We're in the middle of uh, providing that information. Any above-based requests get into the, to the docket Friday this week. So, When do you make your uh, presentations to the uh, county commissioners? I just want to make sure I'm, I'm still okay. Good. Okay. Perfect. So. <laughs> um, actually, uh, we've actually uh, we've changed the way we've been uh, providing information uh, through the Board of County Commissioners. Uh, we actually meet with the entire budget team, all assistant county managers, uh, make presentations uh, to that group, and then that group then makes a recommendation to the uh, to the manager, who takes that back to the Board of County Commissioners individually, uh, letting them kind of understand those pieces, and then to the full board. 
uh, in, a, in a full open public meeting uh, in, uh, I think right now it's scheduled for May. Let's stretch it a little bit farther. Is this commission going to have input prior to a discussion with the assistant county managers? Um, as you as you may re recall, uh, last meeting I had uh, requested any budget thoughts that you may have via email. Right. I have not received any from any of the commissioners, okay. uh, but not in a public setting. Uh, we hadn't gone down that path uh, simply because of the uh, kind of the, the current status of where we are with covering uh, our escalating costs as a county um, and not uh, not having a whole lot on top of that for uh, additional uh, above base requests okay. countywide. Thank you to both of you. <laughs> okay, there's no questions about the parks report, so we can go ahead and move on to the director's report since you're there. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Again, for the record, Dave Solero, uh, assistant county manager. Uh, so some action by the board uh, over uh, in uh, January. Uh, you, As you may recall, there were a couple of uh, Tumwa easements up in the Galena fan area up off of Arrow Creek Parkway. Those were both approved by the board. Uh, as well as the Tumwa easement out in Spanish Springs around Sugarloaf Peak. Uh, so all of those have been taken care of. Uh, again, we are uh, continuing to work through our budget uh, preparation process. We've received input from all of, uh, all of the uh, park staff uh, out in the field. It's been you know, put through. Uh, Colleen and Eric have provided uh, me some information, and I'm working through those projects right now uh, for a submission to the budget team. Uh, our deadline is Friday this week. Uh, so there's, uh, there's still a chance if you'd like to see something specific, if you have an idea or if you've thought of something, seen something out in, there, in our parks, if you get that into me you know, as quickly as you could, uh, we'll take a look at it and evaluate kind of a, you know, as, as the, the rangers and the maintenance folks have put in their, their requests as well. Um, so uh, fully expect to have a, a good dialogue around budget here in the next couple of weeks. We'll bring an update uh, in uh, March for that as well. Um, Update on um, Wild Creek Golf Course. I know that's one that uh, we haven't brought a full presentation to you. I've been trying to line it up with our golf course architect and a date uh, when he's in town. He's actually going to be in town Thursday and Friday of this week, so we just missed it uh, this week. But we, he's finalizing some of those, uh, those plans. Uh, so hope to have a full uh, presentation available for you all, hopefully before we start construction, just so you get an idea of what it is we are uh, proposing to build out at uh, Wild Creek Golf Course. Uh, with that, I am available for any questions you may have. When you ask for input, you're, you're talking about the operating budget and IP? Uh, for the operating budget uh, okay. at this point. Uh, the infrastructure, uh, actually for infrastructure preservation projects, uh, at any time if you, if you see something out there, we'd like to hear about those not uh, tied to the budget. However, okay. we do have that budget piece. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. My, Madam Chairman, might I recommend that we take a five minute break just to okay. give the uh, okay. Eagle Scout, if he's going to appear, um, an opportunity to show up. I know he's not here yet. Okay. Or, and uh, then we can reconvene, take public comment if he's not, and we can adjourn. Okay. Okay, so we'll reconvene at 3.13.
Mr. Gardner. Okay, I would like to go back to agenda item number seven, the Eagle Scout presentation um, with Mr. Gardner. Happy Tuesday. Good afternoon, commissioners. For the record, Park Ranger Nick Stoyer, based out of Bowers Mansion and Davis Creek Regional Parks. And it, uh, yeah, it's my pleasure to uh, introduce you to Hiram Gardner, Eagle Scout, who worked on a really neat project, a great improvement for Davis Creek Campground. Uh, without further ado, I'll turn it over to him. Good afternoon, like mine. Project we made is about like replacing 16 fire pits, uh, including also like six, uh, four like tables need to sand, sand or recoding for the tables at Davis Creek, for I invite like volunteers. The total for both days are like twenty like both like about twenty five day no twenty five volunteers. I I, I ask I ask United Rentals and Home Depot the for donate their time to donate the donate everything I need therefore to complete like I organize like the 25 25 I divide the 25 people into groups to like f faster individuals in, in sets the next ones are These are the pictures that are before, like these are the picture before I, before I destroy or fix these. Some of them the, have the X are what are to replace and destroy. The next one is that during the process of the of sanding and destroying the fire plate plates and sanding the tables and recoding the tables after the sanding. Also one picture is like putting the debris in a trailer that we could place where nearby and Next one is the after the results, like the after the results of the processing, like sending tables and we like like this like remove all of the markings on the tables and for the fire pits we like add like cover up the holes that we put where we put the anchors are, then we put back the rocks of, put the rocks around the fire pits. Then where we replace the fire pits at, we put mostly the fire pits at the south loop, then and the five are at the north loop. And mostly we put the four Sanding and replace sanding and, and recoding tables at the north loop. 
but the two tables we only recording and we did not do any tables at the south loop because Coast Ranger Nick didn't say or didn't guide us which tables are needed to sanding or recoding. But I give you a brief, a brief explanation and also color coordination where the the tables are at also the the fire pitch too. That all it. Great, thank you, Hiram. I really appreciate it. This is a great job. Thanks. Thank you, Hiram. Great presentation. You did a really good job, and and it's it's tough sometimes to stand up there and talk to a group like this, but you did an excellent job. So thank you. Also, thank you for uh, volunteering. You're Don't ever welcome. stop volunteering because people out there need help <laughs> everywhere. And uh, people like you that come forward and volunteer are a huge strength for the community. Thank you very much. And on behalf of all the people that will use the fire pits and the benches this summer, I thank you. Mm -hmm. Because many will. Go ahead. So, oops, is that on? There we go. So, hi, what, what do you, what was the, uh, uh, first of all, I want to congratulate you. Late, let's try this again. Congratulate you for a great project. That is really nice that uh, you're able to do that. Uh, what was the thing that made you, uh, uh, what was the thing that made you happiest about doing this project? What would you get the most joy out of it? Uh, um, probably helping the community do, like, inc upgrade or change mm -hmm. um, to, like, do, see the better, um, sorry. No, like, go ahead. You're doing great. Do, to improve the community, community to be better mm -hmm. and not see the worst. Yeah, it was a nice project. You did, you did really well. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, taking the time and coming forward and, and making an impact on um, the resources that are being used by all of us here in the county. So, and thank you for coming here and, and presenting to us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, we will move back to um, number 12, commissioner's comments, and this is for any topics or issues for future workshops or agendas. Um, Commissioner Schwartz, do you have anything? Okay, are there any other public comments? We have no public comment. Okay, thank you. With that, we'll adjourn. Thank you very much, you guys.